Okay, one, two, and it says I'm streaming here, but I don't, I don't see myself streaming there on YouTube. Let me refresh the page. Um, what's going on? Okay, something's something's up with this stream here, but probably no one's watching yet, so it's okay. Um, what do you mean data entered will not be saved? What does that mean? <laughs> okay. That, uh, that looks more like it. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, um, let's see. So I'm finally done. It's, uh, 1 p.m. here in Chicago, which means it's, um, maybe I should double check, time in London. Okay, it is indeed 15, sorry, uh, 19 Greenwich Mean Time. Um, I guess I'll just kind of pull down, I've been checking Twitter because I finally posted this uh, this thing here, I'll just kind of pull it down here into my other screen so that um, you all can see what's what's going on. One person's watching, which is cool. I'm gonna wait for uh, I'm gonna wait for Global Traveler to come on, and then I'll. Um, I promised him that I would have whiskey and a cigar. Uh, unfortunately, cigar cannot be smoked since there is a smoke uh, alarm right there. Um, and my landlady would get mad. <laughs> um, however, I do, and I, <laughs> and in all the craziness that's been happening the last few um, days with uh, school and all that, I didn't really have time to get whiskey either. Um, so I have some vodka, uh, which should be fun. But I'll I'll wait for, I'll wait for Global Traveler to uh, to get here. Um, in the meantime, let me just go over kind of the changes that I made since last time, uh, since the last stream. I made a lot of progress um, because as, as, as interesting as it is to, you know, live stream and, and do th these things live, um, it's also very sort of time consuming to, to have to kind of explain things out loud, um, you know, but it's, it's sort of the nature of the live stream. You have to sort of talk and explain what you're doing. Otherwise, it's kind of... Well, a little too quiet for most people. Um, so anyway, what is happening here? The changes that I've made, basically what I did is I've added these little bubbles. Um, and I guess I'll, I'll go to 100. And this is sort of actual size, quote unquote. I guess it doesn't really matter since um, for you guys watching on YouTube, there's probably, it's all, you know, the scaling's all messed up. But... Um, yeah, these little dots just simply indicate the, uh, the number of the, um, you know, the road, and, um, I don't know, what else did I do? I can't remember, I'm pretty sure these, these, uh, provincial boundaries were already there when I was when I had my last uh, live stream. And I also, I talked about ha adding this uh, legend here. Um, I've expanded the legend a tiny bit just to include a, uh, an explanation on what, you know, what this line number is. Um, I mean, what else? Um, okay, looks like people are sharing my map, which is nice. Two people watching. So um, I don't know. I mean, I didn't really make any uh, huge. Ooh, <laughs> this is embarrassing. Okay, one thing I just noticed. Um, 
is that these things are sort of placeholders. Um, fortunately, that's not a big deal because it only really matters for the people that uh, bought the map, which is currently zero people. Um, but let me just fix that real quick and update that on my website. Um, Carissa, what is Carissa? Let's see. All right, so I'm, I, I have, uh, you guys can't see this in the YouTube broadcast, but I have um, different maps open in other parts of my screen. And uh, there we go. So uh, what, is, what is Carissa? I gotta find this quick. Carissa is located here. Uh, and of course, of course, of course, there is no modern city that corresponds to it. That's, that's awkward. Let me see if Wikipedia has anything to say about this. Carissa. Ah, yes, Carissa is a genus of plant. Okay, that's, that's funny, that's great. Um, for the person that just tuned in, I just uh, noticed sort of an awkward mistake here. Um, I forgot to include the city names for these three cities, so I'm trying to fix that. Um, aha, there he is, Global Traveler. I've been, uh, been awaiting you. Um, okay, well, I guess I, so I just explained the, the situation. So before, before any sort of celebrations or, uh, or chats can take place, unfortunately I have to, um, I have to fix this. Um, okay, so there's a place called Carisha. Yeah, I mean, the exciting thing is this sort of race against the clock to try to fix the, uh, <laughs> Oh boy, fix this this stuff here. Um, Turi Rekina. Wow, I, I'm surprised because these are were pretty significant towns, and for some reason they're just not. Mm, they just do not have any sort of modern analogs. Um, Turi Rekina. I guess that's Junta de los Rios. Um, there's no T here. Punta de los Rios. Um, and finally, Acido. Come on, this has to be. It has to be something. Okay, Med Medina Sidonia. Uh, sure, whatever. Medina Sidonia. Okay, wow. I hope I don't have any other um, placeholder texts. I thought I was pretty thorough in making sure that I didn't have any, but uh, I guess I missed I missed these. Um, I'm gonna hit Control Save now, and I'm going to. Uh, The problem, okay, file, I'm in the wrong app. So I guess I'll just um, export this stuff. Um, the problem is that I can't easily update it on my website. I mean, I can, but it's it's involves um, it's just really annoying, and it's such a minor thing. So I'm I'm only going to change it on the itch.io um, because I don't want people buying this and printing this out with the mistake on it. Um, oh, I guess I I don't have to update the thumbnail. Um, I mean, I could. What I could do is I could SCP into it, and um, let's see here. Final. These. This is what. Okay. 
Sorry, I'm just going through my files here. This is this is uh, unfortunate. This little mistake here that I've made. Um, okay, I can delete these files and uh, go here. All I'm doing is I'm just renaming the files in a different part of the screen here, um, and then. Okay, so yeah, so damage control. First order of business is to go back on itch.io and uh, okay, this is Italy. I don't want that. I want um, um, I want Iberia. Unfortunately, Iberia is not showing up weirdly. Okay, where's the dashboard? Oh, that's, that's why. Okay, it's a draft. Uh, okay, um, let's see. All right, so I'll delete this file, upload a new version of it, which uh, let me just make sure. Yep, it does have the uh, it does have the fixed uh, stuff there. I guess I should delete this file as well. I offer a um, I offer a PNG version for people who people who need that. Okay, and make that public, and we're gonna save. Whew, okay. All right, so that's done. Um, I guess uh, the problem is that people are definitely going to take this these images from my website. Um, so I don't want the wrong version spreading on the internet. Um, so I guess I'll just go through the motions and just sort of uh, just sort of update everything. Um, Use the low resolution version for my website. And uh, let's see, I guess I'll, yeah, this should be a slightly different URL, and I have to go in here and uh, update that. Unfortunately, there's no updating my, my Twitter. But <laughs> whatever, I'm just gonna have to live with that. It's not a big deal. Um, gonna close these folders here. Check Twitter again. Some people are, oh, my dad reshared it, that's nice. Um, oh shoot, we still haven't. Uh, Anyway, I think it's, uh, the work is never done, but I guess it's time to celebrate. Uh, cheers, I can't get this into the camera, there we go. Oh boy, it was a little more than I uh, expected, but pretty smooth actually. It's a gray goose. It's just something we happen to have in the uh, cabinet. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Global Traveler. It's, it's how do you pronounce that? It's, let me look that up. Sl Slenta. I'm learning a lot about Scotland just by talking to you. I mean, there's no Slenta. S Slaint? Slenta. How do you pronounce it? Oh, Wikipedia has a, <laughs> apparently there's a different pronunciation in Irish Gaelic, Scots Gaelic. Okay, Slanta. Is that right? Slan, Slan, Slanta, Slanha, Slan. I'll use that, I'll use that in the future. Um, good stuff. 
yeah, so, so anyway, um, I was just going to say that, uh, you know, when you, when you uh, spend so much time sort of working on and looking at the same image and the same map, it's easy to kind of lose touch with um, what it actually means. And like, I don't know, I printed out, I guess I'll go grab it real quick. Be right back. So, printed out a test print. Um, I guess it looks kind of horrible on camera, but um, it's just crazy to see, you know, to see it kind of in real life and it sort of puts things back in perspective, I think, and I'm, I'm very, uh, very happy with this result. Um, I'm sure there's going to be some, some changes down the road. I mean, I keep promising, there's people who have been nitpicking about certain details of my Italy map, and um, which I'm very grateful for. I'm, I'm glad that people sort of pay that much attention to it and, and offer these helpful suggestions, but um, it's, it's really quite hard to sort of maintain these, uh, these, these things, you know, it's, it's like, just um, don't have the time, unfortunately, and it's sort of like, you just have to move on to the next, the next project, basically. Um, I was considering doing France after this, um, but let's see, I'm just checking Twitter here. I was considering uh, doing France after this, but I think, um, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'll do it. Maybe I won't, depending on uh, how sort of, I guess how popular this map gets. I mean, I'm not even sure if it's, you know, right now it's uh, spreading pretty slowly. Um, got, it got a few retweets, it got a few likes. Um, you know, but obviously I, I, I do it more for the craft itself. Um, it's just a hobby. Um, I don't know, but France France would be cool. And the nice thing about this map is that um, it, it does uh, stick pretty closely to the Antonine itinerary. Uh, and so it's sort of um, more, more objective, um, you know, I mean, <laughs> not that the Antonine itinerary is 100% objective, but I, I, I guess it's more closely linked to sort of the mainstream um, Roman, you know, literature and stuff like that. Um, as opposed to me just sort of going in and doing what I did with Italy, which I might as well uh, open the file here. Um, you know, sort of, I, ju I just sort of went in and um, fortunately enough for me, the roads were already pretty well defined. Um, but, you know, in other instances, I had to just sort of make things up and, and kind of, um, you know, it, it just wasn't, it was basically just my discretion, which, which lowers the historical credibility of the work. Um, but, you know, I'm comparing sort of the styles of, of, uh, of these two maps, and obviously they're, they're quite different. I mean, this map is uh, sort of chunkier, um, I think in a good way. Um, I think one of the problems with, with the Italy map is that even though the, um, personally I'm a huge fan of these sort of thin lines, um, just because it just sort of looks nice. I, I think it's sort of a, a designer's trope, you know, having extremely thin lines, uh, minimalism, things like that, um, but the problem is sort of if you zoom, if you you know if you imagine that this is a poster on the wall and you kind of zoom out and look at it, um, it doesn't just it doesn't have quite the same impact as as a poster would if um, the lines were thick enough that you could actually see the color from a distance. And this is something that actually uh, my mother pointed out to me, who uh, um, does have some training in graphic uh, design and and 
you know, she just sort of said like, um, she's very blunt, you know, she's like, no, no, you need thick lines. And I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. And uh, fortunately, this particular design uh, system sort of lent itself to, to thicker lines. Um, I drew inspiration from, I guess I'll show uh, Cameron Booth, his, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just typing as I'm talking, but basically his Amtrak map. Um, I'm not ashamed to admit, okay, wait a minute. Uh, I'm trying to find sort of a close-up or, or a slightly higher resolution. Um, let's see here. Well, okay, yeah, I suppose he's, he's, uh, he's smart not to put extremely high resolution images of his maps um, online. But uh, you can see here that, you know, this is a very similar style. And uh, this is something that I tried to, I'm not going to say emulate because I definitely wanted it to be distinct. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, um, it was helpful to look at it and sort of see um, how to handle the problem of multiple parallel tracks and uh, transfer stations and things like that. So, you know, I kind of gave, gave it my own sort of twist. Um, and I think it, it, it turned out reasonably well, especially for a, a first attempt of, of you know, this, this sort of map for me um, in terms of, you know, not just a to B connections, but sort of a, I guess the technical term for this would be a uh, multigraph because there's multiple connections, for example, between Astigi and Hispalis, and I have to represent that somehow. Um, so, great learning experience. Um, I wonder how many hours total I spent on this because people sort of ask me that and they expect me to know off the top of my head how many hours I spend on these things. Um, and I guess it is kind of important also to know just for the sort of cost calculus, um, you know, um, okay, here we go. Looks like it's finally spreading. Um, yeah, because, oh, because Cameron Booth retweeted it. Yes, I love you, Cameron. Um, I guess I should mention, uh, since I've, I've been talking about, uh, about Cam about uh, Cam Booth, I emailed him one day, just sort of asking for advice on how to print the maps and things like that. And um, he was very responsive. He actually sent a very long email uh, explaining a lot of different things. And, and you know, he's just a. I'm considering uh, reaching out to him again because basically I'm searching for jobs now and. Um, all of my sort of housemates are in the same situation, but they've all sort of found, uh, I, 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 I don't want to disparage their career ambitions, but you know, they've, they've found sort of, um, in some sense, generic office jobs and I'm fine with that, you know, but I, I ideally would want to have something that's related to, um, you know, creating this, this, you know, these kinds of graphics or maps, um, so, you know, I'm still in the process of searching for that, and uh, I have time. I mean, I graduate in June, so that gives me, you know, many, many months. Um, but the point is, like, you know, the, the, it's, I just, yeah, I just want to sort of, you know, I appreciate the support that's, that's out there, and I'd be interested in knowing from, from Cameron kind of what is, because he's, he's a freelancer, and I'm wondering if that's um, actually a means of, supporting himself that, that sort of works um, versus him being sort of semi-retired and just doing this because he has enough money already so I don't know but being a freelancer is pretty stressful though I, I would want to sort of I mean I don't know I don't know if I've talked about this before but ideally I want to have um, some sort of consultancy that I that I would be running with uh, with people helping me um, you know create maps and Things like that, um, but I got to get some experience with you know legitimate companies first uh, before I can sort of go off on my own and um, yeah try to try to blaze a trail I guess. Um, 
wise words from uh, from a colleague at the World Bank. You know, he he basically told me. He just says, you know, don't get ahead of yourself. Um, and so I'll try not to do that. Um, but yeah, so how can this be improved? I I you know. Uh, Part of me kind of wanted to play around with rearranging some of the lines here. And uh, like um, this green line, for example, could go, well, I guess I've, I've saved the file, so there's no harm in, in playing around. Let's see what we can do here. Um, not that I'll actually probably end up ever um, sort of using these changes, but... Uh, um, oh, well, I, I suppose the, mm, the problem is that, uh, <laughs> funny how I, this is such an obvious thing, but I hadn't thought about it. it, it the, the problem is that, well, let, you know what, screw it, let's just, let's just try it out. Um, these, essentially, the, there's all these stations, oh, yeah, no, this, this looks nicer, I think, because it's kind of has this uh, this flow going like this, but um, yeah, it's misleading. So so anyway, I will. Whoops. I think I control Z a little too far into the into the past. One thing before I respond to what Global Traveler is talking about. One thing that kind of bugs me about Illustrator is that. Um, you see this little asterisk here, which means that basically there's unsaved changes in the file. Um, it's such a bizarre. I can, for example, I can I can hit Control S right now, which I won't because there's weird changes that I don't want to be implementing. But I could hit Control S, make some random change, hit Control Z, and the file is still going to have an asterisk, even though there's no changes that were actually made, um, which really frustrates me because I'm I'm really paranoid. You know, especially with these maps about minute details that might go wrong, and, and it's just... Um, yeah, but so anyway, what, it says one of my friends does something similar with GIS. In urban big days, and I'm not sure what is an urban big day. I just googled urban big... Is that a typo? I, I'm sorry. I just I just don't know. I'm not sure what urban big days means. He's a PhD economist by trade, though. Yeah, that's that's um, sort of a. Uh, I guess I could call him a friend. He's more of a colleague, but the uh, the guy I worked with at the um, at the World Bank, PhD economist, um, but he's sort of interested in 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 doing these kinds of things. Um, I'm I'm looking at I, I guess I'll just kind of bring it up here. Uh, Twitter here with the Romans we had a Mediterranean corridor. I wonder is that like a contemporary Spanish term? Mediterranean corridor. Oh, big data. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I was kind of wondering what big days uh, meant. Um, yeah, urban planning and stuff is uh, is very interesting. Um, I might look into doing something along those lines. Um, who did? Oh, okay. I guess the the message that I got is not related to this map. Um, looks like people are finally uh, beginning to share this. Okay, that's that's exciting. Um, let's see here. So yeah, so, oops. No one really knows what big data is. Um, I don't know. I'm going to have a statistics degree. Um, grad school is a possibility. I talked to some people. Um, I, I was fortunate enough to sort of participate in a 
economics conference at, at Harvard, um, and I guess I was the only undergraduate in the room, but people were very generous with advice. And um, sort of one of the things that I, that I heard was, you know, it's okay to, to wait a few years or, or even several years before diving into something like a PhD because uh, you'll have a much better idea of kind of what exactly you want to do. Um, and I kind of took that to heart because I am sort of interested in, in, in uh, doing something like a PhD be because I'm interested in uh, diving deep to solve very specific problems. But the thing is, I don't have a very specific problem right now that sort of fits into the rubric of the PhD, of, of a PhD program. Um, one thing that I'm super interested in is... Uh, using machine learning to help uh, make design decisions with regards to maps. Um, I mean, Data Wrapper is a, a website that's, I think, I'm not sure, but I think it's the cutting edge in terms of uh, kind of automated um, generation of charts if you just sort of give it data. And um, that's, that's well and good, but you know, their techniques that they're doing are, are just sort of based on simple uh, if statements. And, for example, you know, the, a question that kind of goes through my mind often, especially as I'm doing some of the more routine things when it comes to making these maps, the question that comes up is, how could I automate this? Um, you know, it's... It seems like a, lo a lot of this layout stuff could be automated um, with the help of some sort of machine learning algorithms where you know we're not sure exactly what the model is but um, it just sort of gets formed thanks to uh, some sort of learning so the the problem with um, with this kind of learning is that uh, it's it's really hard to train the model Get some coffee here. <clears throat> Nothing better than stale coffee from yesterday. Um, the problem is that there's very little training data um, when it comes to these kinds of maps. So you'd have to use a different approach. You know, you can't just uh, Find, look up a database of 100,000, uh, you know, transit maps and then extract some sort of model from that. You have to perhaps do something like, uh, like reinforcement learning. I just spotted another mistake in my map. Um, this line here is completely unlabeled. Um, which is unfortunate and it leads me to wonder if there's any other unlabeled lines. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay, I think one, one thing that I'm going to do that's probably good practice is... Um, Okay, so this is this is uh, so it, I'm just gonna add a little version number to the image. So 2.0 was the original release. Then I fixed um, the placeholder names, and uh, now I'm fixing that that missing line number. So this would be version 2.2. <laughs> it's very weird seeing this in Roman numerals. Um, let's see. Um, right, okay, so the highest number, I believe, was line number 40 here. So I need to do, to make line 41. I guess I was going to say it sucks that there's sort of an uneven number of lines. 40 would have been a very nice number. To, uh, to end at, okay, X, L, I, that's going to be 41. Um, I guess I could just stick it here.
Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess I'll save it as, yeah, I don't have to save, I don't have to rename the file. Um, let's see here. So, so anyway, so, but anyway, there's 42 lines, which is, uh, because if I include line A, which is the Via Augusta, um, then it's all good. And that's, I guess, a Douglas Adams reference. Um, export uh, for screens, yep. Um, I mean, what happens if I just do the full document? Oh, that's the problem, is there's just all this crap that comes up. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to do this. Whew. Perhaps I had uh, celebrated too early. i got to update everything once more. It's crazy how um, I'm getting all these Twitter notifications now and all these shares and retweets and things like that. And it's like, uh, <laughs> um, it's either it's either complete and utter mayhem or total silence, you know, um, when it comes to Twitter. There's, it almost seems like there's just nothing in between. Um, okay, guess I'll drag these into final again, and um, well, actually, no, the correct approach would have been, well, let's see, just renaming files again, all right, version 2.2. Version 2.2, version 2.2, there we go. Um, and I suppose I'll, uh, yeah, PDF, PDF. Where's the other PNG? Oh, okay, version 2.2. Oh, there we go, okay. Oh. This is 400. Yeesh, okay. Delete these files. Delete this old PDF. Go back in here. Um, media library. Such a hassle. Okay, uh, um, put that link in there, click update. Uh, I got it. Um, okay, 2.2.pdf and 400. Delete this file, delete this file. Not an executable, it's a graphical asset. Save. Oh, oh boy. Oh, I guess I should, um, I guess I should pin that tweet. Uh, let's see here into my profile are you sure yes because the previously pinned tweet was the Italy map and uh, I am no longer doing that let me make sure that the purchase link actually works yes okay 
Um, yeah, so anyway, I just want to figure out how to use machine learning to try to automate the creation of these maps. And, um, you know, I've made uh, decent progress in terms of just figuring out how to generate um, transit maps just purely using code, using Python and SVG and things like that. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm going to have to, I guess maybe this weekend, I don't know. Uh, get some sort of, uh, you know, try an alternate approach. Um, cool, I got one notification here. Uh, Alberto Almeida. This is a Brazilian guy that I made uh, maps for for his book, which I have right here. It's a nice book, actually. It explains um, basically all are really all you need to know about Brazilian politics. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. Every every tweak is uh, is a little victory for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. I made these uh, very simple maps here. Um, hard to hard to see with this camera, I know, but um, I guess I could expand the window a little bit. Of course, I do so at the risk of um, exposing the mess that is my bed. I usually make my bed, but for some reason this morning I didn't do it. <laughs> um, Anyway, cool book. It's always nice to, to to sort of be able to open up a open up a physical printed thing and see um, see your maps there. I just think that's exciting. And uh, Global Traveler, I wouldn't mind at all if you uh, if you join me in the celebration. Um, now, granted, it's it's uh, a little bit earlier in the day here in Chicago than it is uh, in uh, Edinburgh or wherever you're at. So. Um, <laughs> So you know, I have to be mindful of that in in my in my consumption. Um, let's see here. Um, yep. Yeah, I mean, I, I was I was explaining earlier. I can't remember if I explained this to you already, uh, but yeah, I can't. Uh, there's a smoke detector literally uh, like a meter and a half away from my head. So uh, unfortunately, uh, if there were to be a cigar, it would have to be, it would have to take place elsewhere. So, um, you know. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of browsing, like I guess I'll just kind of move this up here. Well, whoops. Let me... Uh, Oh, that's right. You you are in Spain. I forgot about that. Um, <laughs> sangria will do. Um, I just I searched up uh, Cameron Booth Amtrak map and um, and I got some results here. Uh, honestly, he's he's a really good. Uh, let's see where CamBooth.net. Millennius Wilhelmsen Ocean Trade Route Maps. Oh. Excuse me. I'm not sure I quite understand this map, actually. Um, I mean, I, I guess it looks good, but... I don't know. I feel like uh, I feel like maybe an actual map would have been would have been better for this rather than a schematic diagram. I don't know. It's not that Cam Booth will ever uh, watch this, this this stream, so I think I can speak pretty safely here. Oh, I guess um, I guess this is so, sort of a, a map. I don't know. It's just that the, the benefit of a train. I mean, there's fundamentally a tension between real geography and um, the sort of schematic simplicity and I think that this 
series of maps errs too far in the direction of schematic simplicity because it just makes it it just makes it hard to understand I guess um, New York subway map in the style of the London tube map <laughs> um, ambitious I suppose not sure what the uh, particular usefulness of that is but then again what's the usefulness of a subway style map of ancient roads ancient Roman roads that don't exist anymore I guess the utility of that is um, connecting people to history allowing them to um, be more immersed you know in a way that it's kind of like colorized history uh, colorized uh, black and white photos you know they for me at least they really immerse me in the history because they just take away that that barrier of oh this was long ago you know and uh, here we go <laughs> This is ridiculous. I don't understand how this was even made in the first place. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Let's see. There's Washington, D.C. You know, I've never heard of Gilbert Center or Opal. I've been to Frederick. I've been to Winchester. Um... Hmm. Okay, here's something. <laughs> this is interesting. Here's something that I'll do right now. Uh, let me save the image. Um, open it back up. Quick 20-minute uh, project. Tools, annotate. Um, I guess oval. It's going to have to be red. Or perhaps, perhaps yellow. And uh, let's see. Yeah, we want to make it a circle, and we want to make it. Ah, oh, sucks. If I... Just, uh, just to mark the places I've been. Actually, here's what I'll do first. I'm going to desaturate it. And uh, then I shall add these circles. Okay, I've been to Fredericksburg and I've been to DC. I have absolutely been to Ellicott City and to Frederick. And I guess by bin, since this is an interstate map, I should qualify that by saying that I've driven, um, driven or been driven um, through these locations. Hagerstown. You know, to be totally honest, um, I don't think Chicago's a... It's a worthwhile city to visit for maybe two days max, um, two or three nights. I wouldn't... Most of the stuff here that's, that's um, kind of interesting to do, um, it's mostly like restaurants and um, museums and things like that. It's, I mean, it's nothing like New York. Um, it's not like DC in the sense that there's, you know, ample museums and places to walk around and maybe, f I mean, Boston, San Francisco, and Miami. I mean, I would visit it. Yeah, I would certainly visit it. I wouldn't spend more than like two days here though. I mean, there's just, it's a very utilitarian city. Um, and there's just not much in terms of um, 
But then again, I, I'm not exactly the best person to ask because I'm not really a city type of person. I prefer, um, I prefer being out in the, in nature, being out in the wilderness. So, um, let's see here. I love Boston. Um, DC is nice. I mean, DC and Boston, I would say, are probably the most European of, um, of American cities. Um, SF is kind of weird. It's like there's just too many homeless people and it's really crazy and just kind of like I it's just I don't know how to describe it. It's just like this weird atmosphere that's just not uh, super great. So I don't know. Um, I've never been to Miami myself, so I can't say anything about that. I think that in terms of similarities to U.S. cities, um, Chicago is probably uh, similar to, it's probably most similar to New York. Um, imagine New York, but slightly less crazy and uh, quite a bit cheaper. That's basically Chicago. Um, so, you know, it's like, I don't know if that's good or bad according to to your metric, but um, I guess if you're coming from Europe, I don't know if it's really worth it to visit Chicago. Yeah, Edinburgh sounds like it would be nice. Um, I, yeah, like I said, I think one of the difficulties for me living in Chicago is the fact that there's very little um, nature both in the city and um, outside the city, so it's just it's just incredibly hard to, um, you know. I mean, if you want to if you want to see mountains, you literally have to get on a plane and fly to Denver, Colorado, or something. Um, so it's it's not ideal for me. Um, obviously, I'm just here as a student. I didn't have uh, much say in. Uh, in these things, but yeah, but I'll <laughs> for sure. Um, I hope that uh, I'll have the the uh, ability to to visit at some point. Definitely sounds like a, a great place. In terms of UK, I've only ever been to London, um, and I've and I went. I spent about a week in London. Um, this was maybe like ten years ago or something, um, and it was cool. But I, I feel like I would enjoy London a lot more now. Obviously, I mean. 10 years ago, I was 12 years old. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you know, so there's that. Um, but, um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's, uh, let me, sorry, I'm just getting distracted by my map here. I'm just going to go on uh, Google Maps and look up what Lafayette, New York is. Like, is that a place that I've actually been to? No, I don't think I've ever been to Lafayette, New York. What about, what is Great Falls, New York? Oh, Glens Falls. No, I guess I've never been to Glens Falls either. I've been to various places in upstate New York, and it's very pretty. Um, I really like uh, upstate New York. I think it's... Um, it, it, it reminds me kind of of um, reminds me of Russia a little bit actually, um, depending on where in upstate. But uh, there's a lot of hidden gems in in upstate New York uh, in terms of super nice little towns and uh, um, actually the the second largest I think canyon in the United States. Let me make sure I'm getting that right. Um, New York. We were driving to, um, how can I not find it? We were driving to Toronto and we stopped in a few places. New York State, Large Canyon. Letchworth State Park. Yeah, it's a very nice, uh, there's just these huge cliffs and giant waterfalls and it's kind of like, um, let's see. 
The Grand Canyon of the East, yeah, yeah, yeah. 500 something feet. It is quite beautiful. Um, I'm trying to remember, see if I remember these, these areas. I mean, that's, I've never been up on the Portage Viaduct. Oh yeah, I remember these, these views. Yeah, it's a pretty cool place. Um, oh boy, 14 notifications. What is this stuff? Just uh, random Spanish people. I'm very happy, actually. I, I, I um, my goal was really to appeal to to Spaniards, but um, seguro que tenían mejores rotondas. Okay. Yeah, people are making various jokes and. Uh, Cool. Okay. Good. It's finally catching on. Wonder. I wonder if it'll get um, a thousand likes, like my uh, uh, Italy one did. What the heck? I pressed Z. Oh, I guess Z takes you back to the corner. Let's see here. Okay, <laughs> I guess I'll just keep doing this. I'm just curious at this point to see what, um, have I been to, okay, I've obviously been to Strasbourg. This is um, near my uh, scout camp that I would go to quite frequently, Lexington, Virginia. Um, I'm going to have to consult Google Maps here just to help me out because I don't, uh, have I been to, yes, I have, because we went down to Blacksburg. Um, the weird thing is that the, he uses, like, really strange, um, like, what the heck is, what the heck is Wytheville, Virginia? Oh, no, okay, I've never been to, down to Wytheville, that's, that's not it. Okay, but I've been to Richmond, I've been to Newport News, Virginia Beach, definitely Salisbury, Maryland, Ocean City, Maryland, Laurel, Delaware, Wilmington, De Wilmington Delaware. I've never been to Atlantic City. I kind of want to say that I should check it out, but it seems like a trashy place from what I've heard. <clears throat> Um, these are not places that I've heard of. Okay, I've heard of Goldsboro. Um, and I, I, yeah, I've also I've been to Goldsboro, I should say. Uh, what is Williamston? Williamston. Hard for me to say. I think I've I think I've been there. I've been all over North Carolina. It's a cool. It's a it's a nice place to live, honestly, North Carolina. It doesn't get too cold. The summers are kind of hot, but you can always go to the beach. Um, it's not a very uh, not a very long drive, and it's just like the cost of living is low, and you know people are. Very friendly, and I guess if you live in sort of the Triangle area, they're very, um, like I guess, like uh, I don't know, edu highly educated and things like that. Um, let's see, I've been to Wilmington, been to Charleston, South Carolina. Um, where is Interstate 95? Is that this? I've been to Chira. Chira. So I, someone said that. Is it Chira or Chira? Chira, South Carolina. Chira. Okay, there we go. Somebody like somebody actually. I met people from South Carolina, and they corrected me. They said, "No, it's not. 
Shira, it's Shira. Anyway, <laughs> kind of a digression there. Florence, South Carolina is a nice town. Um, I don't know what Rockingham or Aberdeen. Aberdeen sounds familiar. Aberdeen, North Carolina. Oh, I see. Oh, because these aren't the interstates. These are the uh, the um, national highway system, which is the old, essentially the old interstate. Uh, I see. So that's why I this doesn't match up exactly to uh, trips that I've taken. Well, I've been to Savannah. Um, I've been to Naples, Florida. Um, let's see. I went to Fort Lauderdale once. It was, I mean, <laughs> just at the airport. Um, I mean, I guess technically I drove through Jacksonville, but we really were going to St. Augustine. What is Brunswick? What the heck is Brunswick? Yeah, I suppose technically I've been there too, although I didn't really step outside the car. Uh, no, actually, we might have... Um, Stopped at a gas station or something. Who knows? Um, so that just about sums up my travels on the East Coast. Um, well, I took a bus once from uh, Chicago to... What was Chicago? Chicago to D.C. That was very interesting. <laughs> that was like... Not a great experience, honestly. I, I think you can take the bus as long as it's less than an eight hour ride. If it's more than eight hours, then uh, it's just not worth it. California's quite empty. What does California have? Yeah, well, it's because their, their state route system is just not uh, not highly developed. It's not that no one lives there. Uh, I wonder what the thin versus thick lines mean, though. Oh, historical route? I see. This is a really impressive map. Okay, well, I'm going to celebrate one more time, and then I think I'm going to get back to... Uh, doing other stuff that I was doing. Um, so anyway, seems like the glitches have been fixed. Um, hopefully, if anything else comes up, I guess, uh, well, honestly, the uh, the folks on Twitter will be the first to, to point that out. So, you know. Oof. So cheers to that. And, um, yeah, I mean, what else is there really left to, to mention? I just want to make sure that I kind of, because part of the, part of the reason for these live, <coughs> live streams is also just me trying to document, you know, my process for creating these maps. Um, so I don't know if I have any sort of final reflections on, uh, let me see if, is there actually just one person watching? Um... Yeah, well, anyway, so, so, um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the issue of, um, cramp, being cramped up in the corners, I still haven't solved that, and I'm not sure how I would even begin to solve that, because, um, it's just impossible to plan ahead. Um... Let's see. All right, my, my uh, housemates want something. They're calling me for whatever reason. So anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in for this quick stream. Uh, we're finally done. Hooray. And um, I don't know. I'm feeling pretty good. Twitter is responding quite well. I mean, at the end of the day, I would feel, uh, I think, the, the 
the thing that would make me feel the best would be if people actually purchased the high resolution uh, map and I don't think anyone's done that yet, have they? Uh, oh, maybe one person did. Let me just, I, before I end this stream, I just want to go on uh, itch.io and check to see if anybody bought. Oh, okay, one person bought it. <laughs> Exciting. Well, anyway, so uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, I, I'm going to keep doing these live streams, by the way. Um, they won't necessarily be related to the Siberia map, since I'm done with that. Um, but I do have various small uh, mapping projects that, that I have continuously going in the background, and so uh, there'll be plenty of stuff to talk about. So I'm going to continue these, these streams. Um, but for now, uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, this has been great, and especially you, Global Traveler, really appreciate your steadfast dedication to this channel. So cheers, uh, have fun in Spain, and, and uh, everybody else, thanks for watching. See you later.